And here we are, Astro Wake, thomaswake.com. We're going to do Astro Theology 101 very quickly. The basics. We start off with our circle. The feminine negative energy. We come through the father, fire, air. Our male masculine into the womb of the woman. Woman! Come across with our equator. This is the path of the Earth around the Sun on its 23 degree axis. Here we have the two hemispheres, and there we have the equilibrium places, our equinoxes. When we go down low, we have the Tropic of Capricorn, when we're up high, the Tropic of Cancer. That was not the best illustration, but hopefully that will suffice. And then when we bring that together, this is what it will look like. Now we have it chopped up into four. This is giving our four angles. Also our four archangels. Michael of fire. Uriel of earth. You don't hear about that much. Gabriel, the gift of gab, speech, air. And then... Fire, earth, air, water. Raphael. Raph, you take a raft across the water. Raphael always has fish in his hands. There are four arc angles. The arc being having control over the lesser angles. Now we're going to take our trip of the sun, the earth around the sun, and we're going to bring that from four, our four elements, our four directions, our four angles, angels, into 12. And we do this by dividing four by three, the three ways that we get our elements. Cardinal coming out first, fixed, solidarity, solidation, firmamentness, fixedness, and then mutability, fluctuation, transmutation, um, waviness and there we have our 12 nights of the round table that last line was so oh whatever it's gonna have to suffice our 12 tribes of Israel our 12 apostles of the son of God you might recognize this from such Images as our clock. I got props. On props. So we're going to start off. Here is above the equator where the sun is. The spring and the summer months. Three 30 degree angles for each season. Or four seasons. Spring and summer. Fall where the sun falls. Winter. Here we have the three days of the sun's descent into darkness, into shell, into the winter months. And on the third day, the Passover lamb, the ram of Aries, starts off the new year, the liturgical calendar in the church with the resurrection of the Lamb of God from the land of the dead. And we have the ruler of this house. Each house has a planetary ruler. Seven of the heavenary, heaven luminaries. So we have the first one being Mars. When we take Mars and bring it backwards, we have Ram. When we take the A, R to the M, we have Arm as an army. When we have the passion of Mars in the water, we have Marina, Maria, Mary, Maritime, the feminine energy of water. When we first took this and split this, we took the one to the two, being the polarities, the dichotomic world that we live in of male and female, Positive and negative, masculine, feminine, active, reactive. So we have our four elements. Fire, 
passion, which is our first one. And then we have it in the modality of cardinal, because it's our first one as well. So cardinal fire, we have Aries, the ram that is in charge of the head. This is a clock within a clock within a clock. We are studying the body, which is also our body. We're a macro, microcosm of the macrocosm, a clock within a clock. Therefore, Aries, here we have, is the head, the ram, the crown of fire. How beautiful. Father of fire coming from heaven, starting things off with the ram, the lamb, who is also the leader, the good shepherd, who brings his flock, his sheep, through the twelve apostles' posts that the sun goes through. So the Aries ram is initiating, taking that first step, being bold and courageous. The Aries lamb is often the black sheep, goes its own way. The sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb, that passes us over from death into life, that life of spring, the first month of spring. Now we go to the second month of spring, ruled by Taurus. So we have Mars being the ruler of this first house, and then we have Venus being the ruler of the second house. And this is Earth. We have fire, and now we have Earth, air, water, our first four elements. And then we put the three into the four by their modalities. So we have cardinal, and now we go to fixed, and fixed earth, the bull, in charge of the throat, our speech. They love music. They are in charge of earth, the senses, our sensual world. They love food. You digest food into the mouth. The Venetian energy is a loving energy. Mars, passion. Venus, love, which will compromise for so we have Venus in Taurus, Taurus being the wild ox. Whenever you see the wild ox in scripture, they're talking about Taurus. Now, the Taurus is fixed earth. It's hard to get moving, but earth is an element that is sturdy, that you can build upon, slow moving, but sure, you can step on it knowing it's going to hold you. Now we go fire. Earth, air, the Gemini twins. Now we have air, and we have it mutable. That means it's in a, constant, in a state of flux, uh, flexible. And so we have air, which is communication and thought, ruled by Mercury. Mercury is that curious adolescent who's getting into everything. Mercurious, mercurial energy is curiosity. And the Mars energy is like that jock in high school who plays sports and he was a warrior. And then we have Venus who's like that precious freshman, sophomore girl who's got like wavy blonde hair and is a little ditzy but like just so pure and loving. So we have our third house of the 12, each making up 30 degrees into our 360 degree circle. And we have Air, the Gemini, the twins. Didymus is Thomas the Apostle, which literally means twins, where we get ditto from, me too. So we have twins as the archetype, as an overarching uh, persona energy that emanates through this into us, into our cosmic imprint that we came into this world with. So we have mutable air of the Gemini. The Gemini is ruled by Mercury, but is the mind, the mental action, and the, commu the communicative abilities. They are often, the Geminis are great at communicating and quick thought, but often bounce around from one thing to another and don't really focus, they have a hard time focusing. This moves us into summer, our first month of summer. Therefore, it's going to be a cardinal sign, cardinal fixed mutable, cardinal, and now we come to the fourth element that we see for the first time, water. And this is going to be our crab, which is the 69 symbol. <laughs> Makes you giggle. Shout out to that rapper, Tanuchi69. 
Uh, this has been used for dark occult stuff. We're bringing it to the light. We're going to redeem this for Christianity, to bring Christianity forward, to fulfill, uplift uh, the scriptures, to make them alive, to see how the secret language is encoded in our very scriptures. Look no further than the ancient mysteries, schools of our parent faith, Judaism, and their Kabbalah. Their Kabbalah is all about the planetary energies. So here we have water showing up for the first time. And we have the moon being the ruler. Hey! The moon certainly has a relationship with the water and the tides. Emotions, the feminine energy of the top of our cross. Here's our main cross. So we have cardinal, cardinal. We have another cardinal one there and another cardinal one there. That's why you see that red cross of the Rothschilds. It's that. You'll see another. This is where we get so many symbols from. Our seasons, our, the sun, night and day, dark and light, our environment that we're in. Studying this is just learning our environment that we're in. It's nothing to be scared of or ashamed of. Here we have cancer, which originally, which is also the crab, but originally is the scarab. And it happened to go from the scarab to the crab because we don't have it. the scarab over here. It's from Egypt, where we got this from mostly, even before that Sumeria probably, even before that Atlantean, Lemurian. So we had the crab of Cancer, really the sacred scarab, which was held to be so sacred by the Egyptians because it's in the highest point. That's also where the Milky Way runs. The life comes in through the Cancer, the sacred scarab of life. You can look to Origen and other church fathers who refer to Christ as the sacred scarab. Google it. So, if you are known as a cancer crab, refer to yourself as the sacred scarab, who takes its egg and rolls it to the top of the hill in its own firmament to nurture it, and does all this work just to care for its young. That beautiful, nurturing, feminine energy of this section of this pie that has been systematically oppressed through our paternal society. Not losing the sacred masculine as we bring up the sacred feminine, because when we bring them both up, we bring both up. We're doing injustice to the sacred masculine by doing injustice to the sacred feminine. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. And we're gonna continue through our carnal water. So they come up with new ideas of feeling. Fire uh, Aries comes up with new ideas of having passionate actions. Cancer comes up with new cardinal emotional water things. Water is in charge of emotions, creativity, maternal nurturing stuff. Maternal, we have water and earth, the female elements. Matter, mater, maternal, water, we're going to talk about Maria. We'll get to that in a little bit. Next, we're going to go fire, earth, air, water. What's our next fire one? This is going to be fixed. And this is going to be the Leo, the lion, the lion of Judah, who is in the middle of summer. Its throne sits, the lion sits on the throne. The tribe of Judah, out of the 12 tribes, took this one on. <clears throat> and has great power. The Leo is ruled by the sun. I mean, the sun energy is most associated with that house. The sun shines its light. It wants to be seen. It gives warmth. It comes from the heart. So we have the Aries, the crown. Taurus, the mouth, the throat. We have Gemini, the twins, Castor and Pollux, being our, our, our arms, our duality, and how we're split in half symmetrically. And then we have... Cancer being our ribs, it looks a lot like a crab, and also our breast that's maternal, the mother's breast. I don't have I can't breastfeed. <laughs> Although, from the uh, dog, this is vintage Dior. Don't knock my cardigan. I had a police officer come up, they're like, Pull over. I'm like, No, it's a cardigan, but thanks for asking. 
Dumb and Dumber reference. Moving on to Fix Fire. So this is a stationary fire. They kind of like to be the center of attention to Leo. And they have their pride. The lion's pride could be their downfall. But they come from the heart. The Leo, the sun from the solar plexus. The heart, they have such a pure heart. Authenticity, which is what puts them often in the limelight. Sometimes even they don't even want to. Fire. So we go from the lion, fire, earth. Earth, carnal fix, mutable. Mutable earth. Say hello to the Virgin Mary. Virgo. That's their glyph, their symbol. The Virgo is the last month of summer where it's time to harvest. The constellation Virgo has wheat in her hand, uh, herbs, spices, uh, Mary, as in marijuana is an herb. Wana is where we get John from John the Baptist. We'll get to that in a little bit. The great handmaid servant of the Lord. The Virgo archetype is that of service, of nurses, doctors. They're ruled by Mercury. So we have mutable earth ruled by Mercury. Mercury's got the two mutable signs, obviously, because he's always bouncing around like a little pinball, silver is his color. Or like, so is silver is also the color of the moon, like more silvery white. Gold, the color of the sun. The keys of St. Peter are gold and silver together, crossed. When we bring the masculine and the feminine together, there's our power. So now we have Virgo, that handmaid of the Lord. And next, we have Cardinal Fix Mutable. So we're going to have Virgo to Libra. So that's Cardinal Air. Libra is the scales. The glyph for it is a straight line right here with the sun right on it, on the middle. Because it has to do with the scales. Virgo has to do with the womb. <laughs> The virgin womb of Mary. Look at her glyph. is even an M with a fish tail. We'll get to that. Here we have Libra being the scales of the fall equinox, the spring equinox. Summer solstice, winter solstice. Equal night and day equinox. So we have Libra as the scales. This is the only constellation that doesn't have an animal or human in it. Therefore, they can be kind of emotionless sometimes. But they're ruled by, their element is air, so they're very sharp. And they're cardinal, so they come up with new ways of thinking. They're often always, air has to do with relationships. And so they're always looking for balance in relationships. They can also have a hard time uh, making a judgment because they're always looking for balance. And they can sell themselves a little bit short and it can be a little bit cold. But they're often very pretty and beautiful because their planet ruler is Venus. Duh. Venus is freaking beautiful. Okay, and now we go to Scorpio, the pitchfork tail, who is fixed water. So they deal with the world of emotions of deep dark psychology. And they're fixed, so Fixed water goes, still water is deep water. So they go deep into the world and dark into the world of emotions, of the psyche, of the hidden. And they reach up and sting this, the heel of the virgin. The, the scales are untipped, showing that the human was unworthy. Her sin and darkness abounded too much until the Christ entered into creation. And so we have the Scorpio, also Judas of Iscariot, who gives the kiss of death to the sun to bring the sun to its fall. 
when you get bit by a Scorpio, it leaves what looks like a lip. And it takes a while for you to die. They call it the kiss of death. Each piece has 30 degrees. Each month is ruled by the moon, the year by the sun. Helios, heliosphere, Horus, horoscope, horizon. Horus is the ancient name of the sun from Egypt. Isis, the moon, the feminine. And what do we do to the sacred feminine? We constantly attack it. Terra, the feminine, earth, terror, earth. What are we having a war on right now? A war on terror. Okay, now we have Scorpio, who sold Christ out for 30 pieces of silver. Silver is the moon, 30 pieces of silver. The 30 degrees of Scorpio, where the sun spends a month in. As it's going to its death, and the leaves are going from green to a beautiful orange. It's the sunset. The time, each one of these is two hours of our 24-hour daily clock. Oh, that's another story. Cardinal fixed mutable. So after water, we have... <laughs> after water, <laughs> we have to have fire again. Sagittarius. Mutable fire. Sagittarius, the archer. It's... Oh. So we have Venus, we have Mars ruling Scorpio. So... As our first time, we had Mars shooting out in Aries. Now we have Mars shooting inwards into the emotional depths in Scorpio. We also have opposites, poles. So we have fixed water, fixed earth is going to be um, Taurus. Fixed fire is going to go to the fixed air over here. And that's Another cross that you'll see a lot, often, in many flags. They also mark our holidays that we celebrate. So we have... Oh, I'm sorry. Sagittarius over here. Our last month of um, fall, of autumn. And it's mutable because it's dissolving after the fixedness of Scorpio. And here we have one of the bigger outer planets, or not outer planets, but here we have Jupiter coming on for the first time. Jupiter, Thor, in charge of Thor's day, Thursday. The moon, Monday, the sun, Sunday. Saturday, Saturn day. Mercoles, Mercury, Wednesday. Here we have Jupiter being the ruler of the eighth house of October, the eight tentacles on the octopus is a sign for the Scorpio. So we have Jupiter, the benevolent, wise father the, of Sagittarius. So the Sagittarian has an inclination towards spirituality. And they're the archer shooting out. They often will go on long distance journeys. They're hard to sit down and settle because they're mutable. And they're fire, so they have that passion and that excitability. I have a Sagittarius moon, and I'm just always like happy. <laughs> but I'm also Sag. I mean, Scorpio sun. Like, you still got. I still got loaded, loaded, loaded for the window. Let me get back to this. Jupiter. Next, I imagine we would have Saturn coming on the scene, and show enough we do, in the form of Capra Firkin Corn, which Loki rhymed. And it comes up with a different symbol every day. I'm just gonna do freaking the goat's head, because that's what it is. <laughs> the upside down freaking star. Ah, it's something like, it dips down because the sea goat as well. But that looks too much like this. Uh, just, just imagine, there's also one like that. The sea goat, because we have the goat, because it's the master of earth, because earth is down low. So Saturn is also Satan. He's been given a rulership over earth for an allotted amount of time. That's when we're in the age of Capricorn. 
we were in the age of Pisces with a fish, which is why you see a fish on the back of cars, a fish on the glyph of Mary, because it has to do with the age of Pisces, of the fish. We'll get to that in a second. Now we're transferring into the age of Aquarius. That's foreshadowing. So to get back to Saturn being the ruler of this, so in a way, when we're on Earth, you can take this and flip this around because Capricorn is the ruler of the 10th house, which when we do nail charts, this flips around actually because we're on a clock within a clock. Capricorn is the goat that works its way up the hill. It could be a little bit bossy because it thinks it's the greatest of all time. It could treat its friends like it's their boss. It's Earth, and it's cardinal Earth. So they're like architects. They'll plan stuff out. The Virgo is mutable Earth. They have a perfectionist, overly critical attitude about them. So they perfect it. They have a perfectionist attitude. And Taurus is the one who will get the job done. Steady Eddie winning the race. <laughs> because it's fixed, Earth. So here we have Cardinal Earth, ruled by Saturn. The goat is also the gracious host. Capricornian is beautiful. Very powerful sign. I happen to be a Capricorn ascendant. Your ascendant is where the sun was, what sign it was in on the horizon at the time of your birth. The sun, your soul, our solar system. Your ascendant, your body. The moon, your mind. Mind, body, soul. Learn those three, put them together, bounce them out. You're on your way to heaven, my friend. Send a postcard. <laughs> Joking. Okay, Saturn. We go from Capricorn, Earth, fire, Earth, air. Air. The air of Aquarius. Aquarius. And then this is fixed air so they can be stubborn in their thought the Aquarian but they have Saturn as a ruler still but then they got brought in Uranus who is playing some big astrological parts right now Uranus and Saturn rulers of Aquarius Uranus is that futuristic surprise Saturn is that strict father who is kind of a dick to you when you're younger, but then when you're older, you're like, oh, I can see why you did that. Thank you. And you sit down and have a shot of freaking. I feel like he would drink vodka. <laughs> Something Russian. With made a little bit of milk in there. Saturn. Saturn and Capricorn is like concrete, its color. Saturn and Uranus in Aquarius is a new exciting moment. Fixed air, uh, the internet is a great example of an Aquarian thing that happened. As we entered into the age of Aquarius, we're gifted with the internet. They're unique, they're smart, they're mental. Just like the Libra, smart, freaking uh, Gemini, smart, ruled by Mercury. Uranus is a higher frequency of Mercury. And actually the, the father of Saturn in uh, mythology. And now we're going to finish up with the fishes of Pisces. Piscean. And this is water that dissolves. Mutable. Water, emotional, psychic energy that's out there. So they have psychic abilities but they're hard to focus on one thing. Um, the fish rules the feet, Aquarius, the calves, Saturn, the knees, the kneecap of Capricorn, Jupiter, the Sagittarius, the, uh, these parts of your body, I forgot what they're called, <laughs> uh, Scorpio in charge of regeneration, it's the snake, it's the scorpion, it's the hawk, it's the phoenix, because there's a charge of taking people under and resurrection is in charge of the death and the resurrection. <laughs> Mars is in charge of the death and the resurrection. We're in charge of death, but death is just change. So death is also we're in charge of life. So we're in charge of the reproductive 
um, organs. So the stinger is uh, the male genitalia. Uh -huh. That's why Scorpios are known to be a little bit dark and freaky. Really, I would argue the most sexual ones are Taurus and Capricorn. Okay. Pisces, mutable water. The age of Pisces, because remember we're in a clock within a clock. So though, although we're going like this, we're in a bigger one that goes like this. And so that's the procession of the equinoxes, which happens every 2,400 years or so, give or take. So we're, I would say, Jesus brought in the age of Pisces. And with the ram, we had Moses and the lamb who had to tell them to stop worshiping the golden calf of Taurus. And then it went like that all the way back. And so we're going from Pisces into Aquarius. Exciting time to be alive, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this. Thomas Wake. Oh, are the kids still doing that?